Hare Krishna, very dear devotees, welcome back once again to our ongoing series on the glories of our most beloved uh, Sri Vindavan Dham. Actually today I'm addressing you from our beloved Mayapur Dham. <laughs> Namo Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pashtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swamaniti Namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nivishesha Shunyavari Pasrata Deshatarane all glories to Sridhar Prabhupada. So we're continuing with our series on the binding rope of spotless love. And this will be part seven, number seven. In this series, we have focused mainly on Lord Krishna's butter pastimes, uh, namely his uh, stealing butter, makanchor, and uh, being punished by his mother, Yashoda Mai. Now, one Acharya has uh, summarized these pastimes in, in a most beautiful way, which I'd like to share with you. He writes as follows. In this pastime of Krishna being bound by Yashoda for stealing butter, there is Leelananda, meaning uh, the Lord relishing the mellow of his own sweet Leela, Leelananda. Then there is also the devotee, Mother Yashoda, experiencing Premananda, Premananda meaning the pleasure of rendering loving service to Krishna. So he writes, these two types of ananda, or, or bliss, the Lord's Leelananda and the devotee's Premananda, combine together to create a Purva Paramananda, a Purva Paramananda, meaning unprecedented supreme bliss. <laughs> the Lord and his devotee become drowned, he writes, in this ocean uh, of Ananda. Then he writes, no one can describe it with language for it's indescribable that rasa vaisa, Krishna is the reservoir of all rasa, he's the relish here, but he gives his devotee the opportunity to also relish with him. So sweet, Hare Krishna. So in this part seven, I would like to go deeper into our understanding of Vatsalya Rasa, which is actually the underlying theme of the month of Dhamadhar Mas, or the month of Kartik, which of course has just finished, but we're going to keep going. <laughs> when we discuss uh, Vatsalya Ras, the mood of uh, parentalhood with, uh, between Krishna and, and his devotees, we uh, naturally think of Mother Yashoda, who's the very emblem of motherly love for Krishna. There's a nice pastime that illustrates, well, there's many pastimes, but here's a nice pastime that illustrates this, that once while sitting on the banks of Yashoda Kund, which is where Mother Yasoda would bathe Krishna every day, because it's right next to Nandagram, uh, Krishna told one of his friends, and I'll quote the Lord, even when we visit here and various gopis are eager to provide the best of food for us, Mother insists on making butter for me instead. Sometimes we play in the water as she churns yogurt, and when she's finished, I see she washes the pots herself and insists on carrying the butter back to home while her servants just carry the churning stick. Such is my mother, my friends. He said to his friends, such is my mother. Krishna appreciates so much. Uh, the love of his mother for him, the special love that she has. I was actually reading that um, when Mother Yasoda would make butter by churning yogurt, she would then feed Krishna the leftover buttermilk, either sweetened or salty, depending on the time of the year. This drink cools the body during summer, so during the hot season, she would provide Krishna with plenty of buttermilk, the acharyas say, salted and slightly spiced. And Krishna and his friends would enjoy chatting while drinking this delicious beverage. <laughs> so in this way, we naturally think of Yashoda Mai as Krishna's mother. However, there are many other ladies, many other ladies in Vrindavan who serve Krishna in the same parental mood, the Vatsalya Rasa. However, we should understand None of them give, actually give birth to Krishna, as Mother Yasoda does. It's only Mother Yasoda who gives birth to 
to Krishna. In this way, no one is equal to her. Remember that verse we quoted a few times in this series? Srimad Bhagavatam uh, 10, 9, 20, quote, Neither Lord Brahma, nor Lord Shiva, nor even the goddess of fortune, who is always the better half of the Supreme Lord, can obtain from the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the deliverer from this material world, such mercy as received by Mother Yasoda. Just love that verse. <clears throat> now, if the other women in Vrindavan aren't, you know, literally mothers of Krishna, how do we understand the relationship of parentalhood, of Vatsaya Rasa, with Krishna? Well, it's actually the motherly mood in which they serve Krishna as a mother. It's their mood in, in, in serving Krishna. For example, this is a good example. Um, Krishna would eat his meals at his mother's house, but the Acharyas say that he used to go to the other gopis' homes between meals, <laughs> between meals, and secretly eat their butter, yogurt, and other uh, milk products. And as we've heard so many times, uh, those gopis would constantly complain to Mother Yasoda about Krishna's misconduct. But the Acharyas also say, within themselves, they relished his stealing their butter as the highlight of their lives and the main source of their bliss. And as such, they always thought they too were his mothers. It's this mood. So in that way, um, one experiences and relishes Vatsaya Rasa, or the parental mood of loving Krishna. It's also important to understand that um, Krishna is dealing with the older gopis. And by older gopis, I don't mean in their 80s or 90s. They're, they're still young women, <laughs> say in their 20s or whatever. Krishna's dealing with the older gopis <clears throat> was not uh, based entirely on stealing and distributing their milk products. <clears throat> For example, Krishna and Balaram would sit sometimes with um, other cowherd boys in the courtyard of a friend, just playing or, or talking, and in this way they would enchant these older gopis with their beautiful forms, their gestures, and their speech, just by observing them. These gopis would get so much satisfaction in this motherly mood. At such times, the, um, the, these gopis would be pleased to, I was reading, offer Krishna and Balaram you know, fruit juice to drink, some sweet meats to eat, like that, in a kind of a motherly way. And sometimes, I read, they would even bring jewelry from their own treasuries and decorate Krishna and Balaram with those jewels. <clears throat> it's written that the older gopis considered Krishna to be a walking good luck charm whose presence brought all auspiciousness to their hearts and to their homes. And that fact alone uh, more than made up for his naughty behavior. That fact alone more than made up for his naughty behavior. So Krishna is naughty, <laughs> but they forgive him. <laughs> In commenting, actually, I was reading on Krishna's naughtiness, Sridhar Prabhupada gives a, a, a meaning uh, of the term or the name Gopi Janabalaba. He connects it to Krishna's naughtiness. How so? Prabhupada writes, Krishna would often go with his friends to a neighbor's home and steal uh, butter or yogurt. And if they were caught in the act, Krishna would sometimes become angry and accuse his captor of being the thief. So how, you know, Krishna's stealing in the house. How, how can he accuse those who find him of being a thief? Because, well... Everything belongs to Krishna. Anyway. <laughs> and in this angry mood, Krishna would sometimes pass urine inside the house. And when these older gopis um, would go and bring this to Mother Yasoda's attention, Krishna would stand by, you know, listening quietly. And if Krishna thought that his mother was being persuaded <clears throat> by the gopis' complaints, um, he would look so fearful that Mother Yasoda would at once abandon any thought of scolding him. <laughs> <But Zoya Ross. clears throat> and when the other ladies 
looked at Krishna's beautiful face, their hearts, it's described, became so flooded with transcendental bliss that they forgot their complaints. This is Krishna. Wonderful Krishna. Srila Prabhupada explains it very nicely in Krishna book. Quote, Because of the features of Krishna's face, the mothers were so attracted that they could not chastise him. Instead of chastising him, they simply smiled and enjoyed discussing Krishna's pastimes. Wow. And Prabhupada concludes, Thus the gopis remained satisfied, and Krishna enjoyed their happiness. Therefore, Prabhupada writes, another name of Krishna is Gopi Janabalabha, he who enjoys the gopis, because he invented such activities to please these gopis. Gopi Janabalabha. Thank you, Srila Prabhupada, for that. Now, <clears throat> there's a very interesting pastime where Krishna actually arranged that these older gopis, these mothers in Vrindavan, could act more intimately as his mothers, rather than just observing or giving some sweetmeats or whatever. There's a wonderful pastime arranged by Purnamasi, really, where these um, older gopis could have more, um, a more intimate relationship um, with Krishna as a mother. It happened during the Brahma Vimohana Leela, when uh, Brahma decided to play a trick on Krishna and test if he was actually the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We discussed this pastime very, in great detail, I think, two years ago. But basically, Brahma was confused because he had seen Krishna, you know, in a very light, intimate way, eating and joking uh, with his friends in Vrindavan. So he's thinking, how, how can this be the Supreme Personality of Godhead appearing equal to his uh, cowherd friends. So again, he decided to play a trick. And the trick was that he stole all Krishna's calves and all of Krishna's boys and hid them away in a cave for one year. Now, Srimad Bhagavatam describes very nicely what happened next. It's uh, 10, 13, 18. I'll quote just to be safe here. <clears throat> Thereafter, just to create pleasure for both Brahma and for the mothers of the calves and the cowherd boys, Krishna, the creator of the entire cosmic manifestation, expanded himself as the calves and the boys. In other words, Krishna became all those calves and Krishna became all those boys. So the Bhagavatam goes on to explain that then as if nothing was out of the ordinary, all these uh, boys and their calves, who were actually Krishna, sang and danced their way back to Vrindavan with Krishna himself. Then upon arriving in Vrindavan, Krishna in the form of the calves ran to the calves' mothers, and in the form of the cowherd boys ran to their mothers and fathers in their respective homes. Now, it's, it's said that the cows greeted their calves very warmly, fed them with their milk, and experienced their affection for their calves uh, in an even greater way than before. Well, why? Because the calves are Krishna. <laughs> and in the same way, the cowherd boy's mothers, who the acharyas say um, had always secretly maintained a greater affection for Krishna than their own sons, now felt a, a new and very intense affection for their boys. Actually, Shastra says that the women used to think, quote, will I ever be as fortunate as Mother Yashoda and have Krishna as my child? So now, Krishna having taken the forms of, of these boys, these older gopis are getting that relationship, more intimate relationship with Krishna because Krishna is living in their home for one year, actually. <laughs> so Krishna fulfilled their desire, became more close, that's all your ras. What's that verse in Bhagavad Gita? Krishna says, um, As they surrender to me, I reward them accordingly. So here, these are Bhashavasis. They're surrendering fully to Krishna. Krishna is fully reciprocating. And in the Vatsalya Ras, he's become their, uh, the elder gopi's child for one year. Now, it's very interesting. Jiva Goswami writes that 
during the year that Krishna manifested himself as his uh, cowherd boyfriends, the older gopis' love for Krishna was twice that of Mother Yasoda's. That's an interesting thing. <laughs> Just for that one year, the elderly gopis' love for Krishna was twice that of Mother Yasoda's. Just how kind is Krishna to give them this opportunity, these older gopis? So then Krishna went on to uh, continue with the pastime. We won't go into detail here, but for one year, uh, the cows um, were able to have that uh, affectionate relationship with their calves and the older gopis with Krishna in the form of their sons. So sweet. Anyway, it's been wonderful <laughs> discussing today. I have some important duties I have to attend to here in, in Mayapur Dham, so we'll, we'll conclude here. Um, really wonderful discussing Domodar Lila, even after the month of Karti, and seeing, as we often do, how the Supreme Controller is controlled by the love of his devotees. So sweet is Bhakti. And one Acharya has written, as regards Mother Yasoda in, in this way, being able to control Krishna with her love, he, he writes very beautifully, very rasik. He writes, even though his breathing is the origin of every atom, whenever Krishna enters Vrindavan forest, he rejoices in the unlimited bouquet of fragrances that come from its flowers, plants, and produce. Similarly, though Krishna's hearing generates every type of sound, and thus he hears everything, he is especially inclined to hear his glories sung in Vedic hymns, even more so his own sweet holy names. Scriptures confirm that nothing escapes Krishna's attention, but at times his pastime potency restricts his hearing so that he cannot hear his mother Yasoda sneak up behind him when he is stealing butter. Hare Krishna. So we'll finish today with a beautiful prayer from Rupa Goswami's Padyavali, short but also very sweet. Awakened at dawn by the sound of yogurt churning, Krishna stealthily entered a gopi's home, blew out the lamps, and stole a handful of butter. I pray that child Krishna may always protect me. Sri Rupa Goswami Prabhupada Ki. Wow. Thank you so much, Prabhu. Very relishable. I think um, that we can have one more class on uh, Doma Lila. One more class. So I'll work towards that next Friday. I hope that you enjoyed all this uh, nectar. Well, glory to Sri Prabhupada. Shishi Gorni Tai Ki, Shishi Krishna Balaram Ki, Shishi Radha Shama Sundar Ki, Vrindavan Eshwari, Shimati Radha Rani Ki, Lord Dhamadar Ki, Madhya Sura Ki, all the other gopis Ki, <laughs> Mayapur Dham Ki, Shishi Gorni Tai Ki, Shri Krishna Sankirtan Yagi Ki, Nitai Gaur Pimanandi, J. J. C. C. Radhe, Shan Meshira Baba.